yeah, this isn't working anymore. Let's just go downstairs. Let's just open these up real quick. So I was actually gonna solder all this together, but uh, we don't really need to, because I found these wires. And it makes things a lot easier um, just for testing. Um, yeah, what I'm gonna make, uh, I was gonna continue my robot a little bit, because I felt like it. And um, so the one issue I've always had, and one of the things why I, um, I know it sounds ridiculous, but one of the reasons I don't continue things like this is because I have like a tiny small issue that is super solvable, but um, it's almost like because you know how to solve it, you don't really need to do it anymore. Um, so yeah, the, the, the thing is that when you um, program some uh, driving logic into this grid, so this camera keeps cutting out, uh, now I'm gonna have to keep checking it. As I was saying, um, <laughs> I went through the whole thing, that's why everything is now jumped. Um, and then the camera cut out, so I will have to start again. Um, yeah, what I was saying is like when you program some driving logic into the robot, there is no way for you to shut it down, basically. And uh, that's a big problem because um, it makes testing really hard. So like it will start driving around the, uh, the, the room and um, you know, like you wanna say like, okay, that works and then let, let's do something else and just put a switch on there to turn it off. But again, once your driving logic becomes a little bit more complicated and it's driving further around the room, it's actually really difficult to um, go and chase it around while you're doing all this stuff. So um, since this is a uh, pet related project and um, the robot and Boogie are supposed to be sort of um, functioning together, um, what I wanted to do was, because Boogie can respond to certain types of whistles, right? And um, I, I figured we can do the same thing for the robot and that's what this thing is doing in my hand. And as I explained before, um, this is a microphone uh, coming out of some Arduino sensor kit. And um, what we can do with this is, is turn sound into a... Uh, so on my screen I have the Arduino pinout of the Udo Bolt Gear. I've explained this before, but basically this thing um, has a uh, uh, GPIO array right here and an Arduino Leonardo compatible right there. So um, let's just quickly uh, pin this up and then uh, uh, we can continue that. So it has an A0, a ground, a, a five volt uh, pin and a digital uh, zero pin. The digital zero is gonna go into digital pin three. The A0 can actually go in A0 of, is that true? Yeah, it can go to A0, but that's six positions, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, so that's there. Uh, then we have the uh, ground, that is um, right there. This is just standard Arduino stuff, right? And the five volt, and it will turn itself on. So uh, we'll jump into the computer and just uh, do some code and see if we can get this to work. So uh, yeah, we, we open up the Arduino um, stuff. Uh, let's uh, close this, I can't remember what that was. And uh, we'll, we'll probably need to add a library usually, so uh, let's go uh, chase that. Uh, I, I can not remember where if I still have the uh, Elegoo stuff on here. Seemingly I don't. That'd be pretty weird for me to throw that away, but I guess I did. Uh, so let's go and uh, find it. So it's, uh, yeah, you can you can most likely just find it like this. This will just provide you with libraries that you need and stuff. Um, um, yeah. Actually, is that the one? Yeah, fine. It doesn't really matter which one. Like, they sell so many of similar kits, basically. Like, um, I like it because it's, it's, it's cheap and... Uh, you can you can um, prototype things really nicely that way, you know. 
So um, let's go to files, and now we have that. Usually, um, yeah, you just go to libraries or something. Uh, do we need it? Let me just actually read that real quick over here in the uh, thing. It's seemingly we don't even need a library. Let me just get um, the code out of this to this, this uh, little tutorial here that they provide you with. Um, you know what? Let's let's do it even simpler. Uh, we'll just go here. Uh, no, 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 no. Sound sensor. There we go. We should be able to just open this. Okay, so uh, let's see what it does. It goes digital pin seven. I don't think we set seven. I said, we set three. Um, yeah, we set very much three. So that's digital pin input LED 13. Why is it? Yeah, that's not really important. I, I don't think we even have that LED on. Uh, that's basically like an indicator. I don't, I don't think we need it. Because um, I just want to see the analog value. I don't need to do this logic here. Uh, digital read digital. Yeah. Okay, so we can actually go and set our port to the Leonardo board. Uh, set our um, board type to Leonardo as well. Uh, let's have a quick check. No, I removed something or it wasn't there, I, I don't know. Uh, let's save that. Let's do a quick check and then upload it to the board is done. So now we should be able to open serial and it is indeed showing us values but what happens what happens if we talk right into it? It seemingly it's doing something. Sorry. Sorry if that was loud. Um, we should actually uh, be able to see the serial plotter that would make a lot more sense. Uh, but I never know where to find it. There we go. Ah, not available. One monitor is open. That makes sense, right? Because um, the serial port will be in use. So, okay, here we get a, a nice plot of what we're seeing. Interesting. So it's reacting to pressure as well, because look, I'm tapping it on the table. Can, I should probably show you. Let me turn the camera back on. Okay, so like you look at the plot and like when I press it on the table really softly, it starts to become like unstable. And when I tap it, you can see that it's starting to spike. Now, the question is how it will respond to actually talking. It's doing stuff, but I, I need to know how to convert that into a frequency. Mm. We know the amplitude, because that's the, um, the plot we're seeing, right? Like, um, amplitude. Frequency is, um, yeah, different. I have to research this, I will. Uh, let me go do that. Okay, so it turns out we need some, um, you can go bigger. Uh, we need to add an Arduino FFT library. So I'm sure that we can just find that in the library manager. Um, it's called Arduino FFT. Yep. So that's um, if you didn't know how you install a library uh, real quick. So I'm following some code from a dude named, um, hold on for a second. I'm gonna find his name. And uh, if I remember, I will link his channel. Um, his name is Clyde Letsum, PhD, PE. Okay, uh, Clyde Letsum. 
I'm, I'm saying it again for myself, so hopefully in the edit I will remember to uh, add some details about him. Um, found him on YouTube doing some uh, stuff that we're looking for is to um, uh, get uh, a frequency out of our um, microphone. So we want to include the library. Uh, that should be enough. And then define some samples. That's kind of what I figured. I don't know much about this type of signal processing. Um, what I do know is that, yeah, um, to get a frequency, you need you need a little bit over time, right? You need amplitude over time or something or uh, whatever the um, what's it called the wave the wave size. Um, well, yeah, uh, and then uh, define um, sampling frequency. Uh, well, mm, he is making that 200, uh, 2048. And then um, we have to define a type and set that to a new instance of Arduino FFT. Good. Then he's making some unsigned int for a sampling period. And unsigned. That would be microseconds. At this point, at this stage in the uh, process, I'm usually just in uh, magic mode, basically. I, I, I don't know either what is going on uh, until we reach the end of the process. Uh, in very many cases, you can just um, you can make that work. Uh, so serial begin. Serial uh, begin. Ooh, he's uh, he's going high with that. That makes sense actually, because we're we're dealing with audio, so we actually probably want to be quite a bit higher. But I'm sure that we can actually uh, lower that, because we're not looking for exact measurements. We're looking for enough to build a command line interface. So let's say that I, I whistle um, 4000 hertz or something, that would be one one sort of bit, uh, or maybe it's more like a, like, a, like a byte of data, right? Like, okay, hold on for a second. How many zeros? Is that six? I'm so dyslexic sometimes. Yeah, six, okay. Um, so that's, damn it. Got to count one, two, three, one, two, three um, times uh, one point zero divided by sampling frequency coency. You know, I suspect that there's one person who came up with all of this stuff and we're all just sort of copying from that. <laughs> uh, void loop. Uh, and then it's a for loop that he starts. Uh, in i is zero. Uh, i smaller than samples. i plus plus. Oh, this IDE is so terrible. All right, micro seconds is micros. V real I. Ah, uh, yeah. So now he's gonna make a uh, an array of measurements, basically. Now we're getting into the point where it's starting to make sense. Um, yeah, we were on the zero pin for analog, right? Um, and then uh, 
Okay, he wants to make an imaginary term. I don't know why. Um, but I'm sure he has good reasons. Then a while loop, um, micros. So we get the current microseconds. Um, plus sampling. So he's, he's defining a boundary now for how long to measure. Uh, and then he says, do nothing, okay. Yeah, I get it, so it's, it's kind of like a weird delay. Okay, well. Let's just go with the example, because, oh no. Windowing is something that I don't really get that well. I have an intuitive understanding, but... So you're basically sort of, yeah, creating a window around time or in time where you say, uh, what's it called? Hemming, okay. Um, you know. This is the where you make the choice, basically. Like, are you going to just use the code or are you going to understand the code, right? Um, and, and obviously the choice is how you're going to bring it out <laughs> once you do. Um, but there, there is no, I mean, I personally don't blame myself for just using the code without fully understanding it because, you know, that takes time and that needs you to be um, willing to uh, specialize in this one thing because um, there is no way you're going to get uh, you're going to get all this um, deeply if, if you don't completely focus on it for at least uh, a long time and Focus is something that doesn't come cheap in my life. I don't know what it's like for you. Major peak. Oh yeah, so like this code example, as far as I understood it, is actually um, basically looking for the frequency of the highest, of, of the loudest sound. Um, that might not entirely work out for us, but we'll see. Uh, sampling frequency, okay. And then we can serial print line the peak. And then... Why would you want to stop there? Okay, we'll try. I think it's uh, it has some weird logic here to actually stop. So we might not be completely out of the weeds with this one example yet. Uh, but let's go and run this. Let's first check it. Okay, I made a mistake and that is double int, invalid types, double int for array subscript. Hold on for a second there. Um, did I do something wrong? Not really, to be honest. Uh, interesting. I mean, obviously I did something wrong, but... Invalid types double int for array subscript. Oh, wait a minute. I did do something wrong, uh, all the way over here. Mm -hmm. This should be defined as arrays, obviously. Good. Look at the microseconds plus sampling period. making your robot boogie. Huh? You have to you have to go play. 
do something else. No? So here we just have a little issue with uh, an extra thing, okay. That's also wrong, print line. Checking, that seems fine, okay. Uh, let's upload it. The board is not available, why not? That's weird. Something is that the problem? There is, but that shouldn't really be a problem, right? Like, let's try it again. Yeah, done uploading. Okay, great. Let's go and have a look at the serial plotter. That's giving us nothing. Also, that's on the wrong baud rate. But no, nothing. Serial monitor is giving us nothing. Strange. Could it? Okay, first of all, let's let's get that while out there. Let's have a, a bit of a serial print line here. Just write test or something. Just to make sure that we're actually getting something. Serial monitor. Okay. Oh wow, okay, so it was that while loop. Um, let's get rid of that test. Uh, upload that. Let's have a look at Serial Plotter once it's done. Did it upload? No. Oh. Oops. I think I kind of broke something there. <laughs> Let's see what it does. Damn, I think I got it into a bit of a weird state by hitting the upload button twice. Okay, so at least it gives me an error now. Can I do it again? Yeah, there's nothing open that could make it not work, so... How about if I quickly switch boards for a second? Uh, and boards? Oh, it's on Uno again. Why is it on Uno? Or did it just switch yet? Okay. Hopla. Compiling the sketch, uploading. It's just deprecation, okay. Yeah, I know it's completely fucked. Uh, ba -da, ba -da. Would it be enough to just quit and uh, start again? Okay, done uploading, great. Serial plotter. Okay, uh, that's giving us samples. Uh, okay, so <laughs> that's great. It gives us noise and then a stable signal apparently when there is uh, some sort of a frequency. Now let's actually test that. Maybe I can find um, some sort of a frequency generator. Online tone generator. Okay, so 440 Hertz. Okay, 
Sorry, this must be quite irritating, but... Um, so, round about 4,000 hertz. Okay, so we have something working, obviously, because um, the measurements are not the same as uh, the exact hertz, but... Um, yeah, interesting. So, basically, what you're looking for then is uh, to kind of window this as well and say, like, okay, if I get one second of... Um, 400 hertz, for instance, that's command number one. Um, we're going to continue that later.